Hi everyone, last Epoch releases on February 21st is a much anticipated new ARPG coming out. I've already been covering it with a bunch of videos detailing all of the interesting endgame systems. But today I wanted to give you my top 10 beginner tips that I think are just really important to know. Just some interesting tidbits, even if you don't follow any other guides, if you are completely new to the game. There are definitely some things that will help you out. So let's get into it. Number one, I want to talk about the tooltips and search bars. So when you look at an item, for example, here, this is my sword that I have equipped on my rogue, for example, you can actually hold down alt to see more information about what you're looking at. So you see here, this item has, you know, a certain base attack rate and melee damage, and then it has like four different stats. And if you hold alt, you can actually see a lot more information. For example, what are the prefixes? What are the suffixes? What are the ranges of this, the item's stats that it rolled? And also, what are the tiers of the stats? And this goes even a step further where it can hold Alt and Control to get even more explanation about how everything actually works in this game. So this just allows you to kind of like look at pretty much anything in the game and get a clear understanding of how things work. So you don't really need to like, you know, read up on external resources necessarily. You can just see it directly in the game. And you can, like most of these things are explained very clearly. And this also works with many other things, for example, your skills. So you can look at your skills. Uh, this is like, for example, the Shadow Cascade, my main skill right now. And if I hold Alt, I get more information, for example, about the scaling. Or uh, for example, down here we have um sometimes uh, extra effects that proc other things like here we create a shadow and then it actually tells you when you hold alt what that thing actually does this is really nice and on top of this we also have search bars in this game so for example in your stash you can open this thing here and you can search your stash you can just type for example helm and it will actually show you all of the stashes that have you know a, a helm in them so here or here, or you could even search for certain stats, like let's say health. And it will highlight all of these items that have health. And uh, you see here, we can also like, you know, filter by, um, you know, other things like unique, and it will show all of the uniques. So that is really cool. And these search bars exist also in other various places. For example, here, we can open Shadow Cascade again. You can also search the skill trees of individual skills. And you can just type, for example, shadow because my build is like really heavily built into shadows which is like a rogue thing and uh, you can just find all of the notes well in this case <laughs> quite a lot of them but um yeah you, this just highlights the stuff that you're looking for so whenever you're trying to make a build you can actually like very easily figure out you know where are the important notes by just searching it you can filter your stash really easily and well you can see what stuff does which is just really nice Tip number two, if you're following a build guide or not, one thing you want to be aware about is how your builds actually scale. And this is also explained in the tooltips right away. So you see here, for example, again, my Shadow Cascade skill, it has these tags at the bottom where it says physical, melee, area, dexterity. And this means that you want to try to scale these stats to improve this build's damage output. Now, it also says like this damage per second value there, which just like in any other ARPG ever, is not necessarily a conclusive, like very accurate description of how much damage you actually deal. However, what it allows you to do is to compare one choice against another. So I can show you an example. So it's, for example, these uh, the, the Shadow Cascade scales with uh, dexterity and with melee damage and with physical damage. And if you look at my glove here, it has 12 dexterity. So if you take off this glove, it will reduce this damage value. So it has 106,000 DPS right now. And if I take this off, it has 95,000. So however much actual damage you deal doesn't really matter, but you can tell the difference by looking at how much your tooltip goes up or down, depending on how you equip your items. Now, this might not necessarily represent every single stat exactly. For example, debuffs you apply to enemies, but you kind of get the idea, I guess. And these scaling tags are really one thing that you want to look at when you try to build your character, when you go for, for example, passive points. So you see here, for example, we have one passive that gives us physical damage, or we have, um, you know, other passives that give us like melee damage, for example, if you search this here. Uh, so here's like melee attack speed, and here's melee damage reaches life. And uh, here is melee attack speed again and melee damage while deal wielding and so on. So these kind of things are what you are looking for if you are trying to build a character and actually try to improve your damage output. 
look at those scaling tags of whatever skill you're using. The good thing is also that at least for items, usually those like scaling mechanisms don't really overlap with your defenses because of this prefix and suffix system. So if you look at, for example, uh, this pair of glove here, it has two prefixes and two suffixes, which is like, you know, the typical, like a rare item that you can have. And the prefixes are usually the more offensive uh, stats, like here the dexterity or the attack speed, and the suffixes are usually the more defensive stuff. So you can try to, you know, mix and match it, but you don't really have to give up defenses to get more offense or vice versa. So it's relatively clearly separated from one another. And this allows you to, like, you know, both work on the offense and the defense, depending on what you need right now. Now, tip number three, when you're playing a fresh character, you will have to go through the campaign. Every single character has to go through the campaign. However, it also has shortcuts, which is a bit more of an advanced uh, like speedrunning strategy, but you can actually skip parts of the campaign at least with, um, let's say, alts when you have like really good gear and a good build and, you know, a few twink items, for example. But mostly what I want to discuss are these uh, extra um, passive and idle slot rewards. So similar to, for example, Diablo 2 or PoE, you can do uh, optional side quests and get more passive points that you can put on your uh, skill tree here. So you can get a total of 15 passive points and uh, eight idle slot rewards. So you can see this actually here. When I turn off the cam, you see this on the bottom left, uh, passive point rewards 15 out of 15 and idle slots 8 out of 8. So you're trying to finish those quests that give you these passive point and idle slot rewards. Those are really the important ones besides the main quest line, of course. So you can uh, distinguish them by um, the golden or the yellow icon being the main quest line. And uh, these bluish icons here being like the uh, secondary quests. But some of them you want to do and you can always see here on the right what are the rewards. So it tells you here, for example, this side quest gives you one passive points and idle inventory expansion. So there are more of these quests in the campaign than you have to do. You see, I've already maxed out all of my rewards. So you don't have to do every single one, but you want to make sure that you do enough of them to actually, you know, have all of these things unlocked by the end of the campaign. So you can choose to like, for example, rush more in the early game and then do more of them later, or, you know, the other way around. That depends on maybe, for example, how much you want to explore the side areas, how weak or how strong you are. Maybe you want to grind out another level or two while doing a side quest, for example, before you move on, because you feel like you need a bit more power. But ultimately, make sure you get those things done before you finish the campaign and go to the end game more or less. Tip number four, also related to the campaign, and that is vendors. Now, vendors are not exactly the way to gear up your character, especially later on. However, very early, they're actually really good. So when you're like level five or level 10 or even level 20, sometimes you can just go to the vendors in town whenever you arrive in a new town and just check what they have because you might actually find an upgrade. The thing is that items in this game are both very cheap to buy and very cheap to sell. So whenever you find like, you know, items on the ground, you don't actually have to bring them to a vendor and salvage them or sell them because they're worth literally nothing. So you see this here, for example, if a vendor's item, it's like 30 gold. I have like 1.5 million on, well, kind of like a late game character. However, gold is not really an issue in this game. So let's put it that way. So you can basically always check the vendors and just buy something if you need an upgrade. So sometimes you might just get unlucky. You don't, don't find any boots that have movement speed, for example, or you don't find a weapon upgrade for a while. Just go check the vendors and maybe there is something for you there. There are also these gambling vendors, but this comes a bit later and is definitely much more expensive. You don't really want to gamble too much unless you really need a certain thing because, well, the outcomes are usually not that great and the cost is relatively high. So while gold is not really a very important resource, you also don't really want to waste it on gambling if you don't have to. But those vendors, at least early on, uh, in the first few levels, you can get some pretty decent upgrades there that you cannot really find yet or are just, you know, maybe unlucky to find. So go check them out when you are low level. Tip number five, loot filters. You really should use them. So this game has built-in loot filters. I have already talked about them in another video as well. But TLDR, you can you know, choose to hide certain items that are on the ground. You can recolor items. You can emphasize them. You can choose to only display certain items that have certain stats on them or even a combination of certain stats. There's a lot of things you can do with loot filters. And if you're playing the game, you'll notice very quickly that you're going to find a lot of stuff that you don't really want. 
but with just you know maybe a few minutes even a few clicks you can make a loot filter that already helps you tremendously to sort out a lot of the stuff that you don't really want to see and i'm going to show you an example live right now so when you don't have any loot filters if you don't have anyone like that gave you one or like you know you import one from a guide or something well at the very least you can make one that gives you a bit of a hand in sorting out the loot for you so this is uh, just going to be like my test loot filter for this video and uh, one thing that i can tell you right away is you generally want to hide items that you can't use for your class and that will already sort out a lot of really um, like a lot of the trash that you don't really want to use so in my case i'm playing a rogue I don't want to see everything or anything that um, I cannot use as a rogue, for example. So um, we just do this here and then you select hide here on the side and boom, we're hiding all of the other classes items that have a requirement that, you know, I cannot change. And this will already help tremendously. And another rule that I can uh, suggest is also that at least after like, you know, the very early levels, like after level 10 or 20 or something, you can start doing something like hide and then you do rarity and you just hide all of the magic and the normal items for example so you only see rare items and up like the uniques and uh, the exalted items later and well like this you're also gonna filter out a lot of the stuff on the ground now there are obviously more advanced strategies around this but these are definitely like two rules that i would definitely include in like um, a very basic loot filter that will just help you like not get stuck in town like looking at a thousand different items because you're gonna find a lot of things and well as you go you can also refine stuff a little bit so for example you can also eventually choose that you want to see only items that have um certain affixes or at least you want to emphasize them you can press emphasize here you can also like recolor and let's say okay like an item that has one or two good stats should be like highlighted in a special way and then you can uh, look around and you can say for example you know, I want to see um, all of the health stats and I want to see uh, movement speed uh, and maybe resistances. So you're going to, you know, add all of these resistances here. And now every item that has at least one of these stats on them will be highlighted on the ground. So if you just add this filter here, uh, we put it here. And if you drop this item on the ground, well, this is a bit buggy right now, but here we go. So now this has like, you know, Compared to like another item, it has like a you know bigger text and you can actually see it right away. And now we can also customize these loot filters a bit more. For example, you can say at some point, oh, I'm finding so many like, you know, low tier trash items. Uh, I want to up the stakes a little bit. And uh, then you can do advanced options and you can say, okay, uh, it should have um, at least uh, like a tier three mod instead of like a tier one mod. So it should have like a higher value. So now this thing would show but uh, I guess if you up this, then it doesn't show as like, you know, the special item anymore. You see, like, this is like a different tooltip now. So I can actually also like live test these load filters. And even with just a few basic rules, you can customize it to, you know, just sort out a lot of the stuff that would otherwise just slow you down. Now, tip number six, that is also something that I've kind of shown now already in this uh, little loot filter that I've sh shown here. But um, when you play through your first character and like in the early game, life and resists are really your friend in order to have a good time. So usually it's not that hard to kind of deal some damage in the early game. Of course, I explained like those scaling tags for your skills. You want to try to also get offensive stats that really help you. But when you look at uh, the defensive side of your gear, you want to stack resistances up to 75 everywhere. So you see this here right now, and you also want to stack life, at least on most builds. Now, there are also ward builds. So these are like, you know, like basically like an energy shield type resource. Uh, so especially like sorcerers or mages, uh, they have um, the, these ward kind of synergies and also the acolytes. So there is also some stuff there, but at least early on, most stuff kind of starts as a life base. And then maybe you progress to like more of a ward build later on. But life and resistances are what keep you alive for the most part. Now there are also some other tools like armor and dodge and endurance, but those are you know a little bit more advanced and you know a little bit more uh, stuff that you're gonna stack up later on, I would say. So you want to make sure that you have 75 resistances everywhere at least towards the end of the campaign because it will just make sure that you take significantly less damage from all different elements. 
So there are seven different elements, seven different damage types in the game. You want to try to cap out on all of them. And likewise for life. So there are these like live mods that you can find. For example, here is like a really powerful item that I have on my rogue that has uh, the double health mods and it has, you know, some good prefixes that I want. And it has like a decent base here with the armor. So this is like a top tier item, for example. And uh, likewise for other items I have, uh, you know, for example, resistance is here and life there and and so on. So you just try to like stack up these life and resistances rolls. And again, this is also something that you could can put on your filter similar to how I just done this. So here, for example, um, you know, movement speed on the boots. This is like a really important start as well. But then life, res, this is really some stuff that you want to try to find. And then you just have this on a filter and you can find items that are actually useful to you. Likewise, when you're crafting items, you also want to focus on these stats a little bit early on, just to make sure that you have a good bunch of those resistances. So there are these shards that you can find here. They are used for crafting with the forge, which is um, just a window here where you just put an item in, and then you can, you know, either upgrade existing stats on the item, you can reroll them. So there's a bunch of like, you know, crafting tools available. I've actually made an entire video about crafting. Um, but TLDR, you can try to, for example, you know, let's, this has armor. I don't really want armor on my rogue right now. I can try to like roll this into something else. And here, now I got fire resistance. So this can be like a random way of crafting it. But for example, if there was an open suffix, I could also just, you know, click on it and then choose whichever resistance I may need, for example. So try to focus on these and get your resistances up there. Tip number seven, also related to items and crafting, it's just mana regen. Now, this does not apply to every single build and every single class in the same way, but in general, resource management is something that you want to be a bit concerned with, but it's not really hard. So, for example, playing a rogue, you don't really have many tools to like regain and recover a lot of your mana outside of just passive regeneration. So every character starts out of a bunch of passive mana regeneration, and this is used to fuel your skills. And compared to other games, the mana costs don't actually rise as you level up, for example, like in other RPGs, like you don't, you don't really like, you know, spend more, but you also have more mana. Instead, yeah, your mana slowly goes up from various sources. And you also want to make sure that you spend, stack up some mana regeneration so you can actually use your skills. So mana regeneration is probably something that um, may be a bit undervalued early on by newcomers. And this is why I want to highlight this specifically. This directly allows you to use more of your skills, basically. So try to stack up mana regeneration. You can get it uh, on uh, rings, on the belt, on the amulet, and on the um, relic slots. And uh, depending on how mana hungry your build is, you might want to put a little bit on your gear. Because some of those skills can really cost a lot of mana. You can see this here, for example, on my rogue right now. You can easily run out of mana, and then I just can't use any skills. And uh, well, this is a pretty bad feeling. Especially if you want to, like, you know, fight in, like, you know, a boss fight or, like, any kind of extended combat. And, uh, well, as I mentioned, this may apply more or less to certain builds, but mana regeneration is something that at least I came to value quite highly. So I wanted to point this out here. Tip number eight idle slots. So this is this little inventory here that is, like, separate from your other inventory, but these are effectively like the other two charms. So if you know Diablo 2, People used to have these charms in the inventory to get certain passive bonuses. And here you have this idle inventory. So it's moved away from your actual, like, you know, item inventory that you pick items with. But uh, here we have, you know, these uh, slots available to us. And you can use them as a filler to mix and match your resistances, for example. So I talked about resistances earlier. And it's really valuable to try to just like pick up a bunch of these idols that have any kind of resistance, even if they don't have a second good stats. You can't, you can't craft them, you can't uh, change them in any way, so you have to find them. And eventually you're going to try to find idols that have two good stats for your build. And of course you try to not overcap certain resistances too much. So for example, you see here I have a lot of void, I have a lot of poison, I'm like way over the cap. So obviously I don't want to have these kind of idols. But you see here, for example, I'm lacking uh, cold resistance and I have an idol that gives me elemental rest here. And, uh, you know, likewise, I have a bunch of other things here. There's a cold resistance idol. And just having a bunch of these like lying around that have any of those resistances can be a lifesaver when it comes to fixing your resistances. So, uh, for example, here I just have like um, one uh, like idle uh, stash, for example, and here has like a fire resistance one. But right now I don't need it because I'm capped. 
he has elemental resistance, he has lightning, and so on. And now I could like easily, you know, swap out, you know, one or two of these idols here, uh, you know, removing stuff that where I have too much, and we can like, for example, search as well. We search cold, and uh, well, here's for example elemental res, and he has more elemental res, and uh, well, we can just slot him in, for example. So here, if I need some more, now I could like fix my resistances like this. So this is another thing um, I talked about the loot filters. You can put, um, for example. Uh, idle um, like stats on the loot filter as well. If you go to the affixes here and you scroll down, there's these idle affixes and you can just say, okay, here, resistances, health, health, uh, this one, and then, you know, all of this stuff. Just show all of this on your filter, for example, and boom, you will find these idols. And just keep a bunch of them around so that you can always sort them in and out. At least Early on in the progression, these things really help you out when you're like, you know, constantly changing your gear, constantly fiddling with your resistances until later on when you actually have really, really good items. And then you can like, you know, more min max and try to not overcap resistances and so on and exactly get what you need. Tip number nine, this game has a lot of stash space. And if I say a lot, I mean a lot. So you can see this here, you can have almost infinite stash stabs, stabs basically in this game uh, you buy them with gold so you can literally just press on like a plus here and then uh, they cost more and more gold as you buy them so this one costs for example 150k now and if i buy another one this will be like 160k but it starts very low it starts like at like 1000 2000 3000 whatever so you can at least early on unlock a lot of stash space for your character already so you want to try to make use of that and actually just dump a lot of items in there that it could use later on. One example are exalted items. These are these purple items that you can find uh, later on in higher levels. They have uh, certain like tier six or tier seven drop only mods, basically. Uh, you cannot craft them because it caps out at tier five, but then you can find these exalted items that have a higher roll of certain stats. So uh, this is definitely something to keep around in case you, for example, want to make legendaries, which is like uh, another system for like, you know, late game crafting, basically. But in general, you might want to try to swap around some of your gear. And as I just described, for example, with the resistances, it's always, you know, a little bit of like a fiddling, you know, like you need to try to like min max your resistances. So it's really nice to have a bunch of different options available. So for example, I have a tab with crafting bases here with like you know, a, a good base item, it has already like two good mods on it. And in case I ever need necrotic res or elemental res, well, I can just take this thing and then finish it. So for example, you know, I, I craft on this and then, you know, for example, these are boots, I'm gonna put movement on them and we're gonna try our luck here. So I can just try this right now. Boom, we have tier four movement speed, we have tier four elemental res and necrotic res and a bunch of vitality. And well, this is, you know, a workable item that I can use in the early end game or so. So here we go. And in case I ever need to swap around some of my resistances, I would have this option now, for example. Whereas my current boots that, well, they do have a lot of nice stats, but they don't have any resistances. And, you know, if I really need, for example, this Necrotic Grass, then I could wear them. And likewise, I just like to throw in a bunch of items in my stash. And then whenever I do like a bit of a crafting session, especially late game, where I don't swap out my gear all the time after the campaign, uh, I just have things available to, to me and then can just search okay i want to craft a new helm you know my helm is not really great right now and i just check what i got and basically anything that looks like half decent that has a few decent mods on it you can just throw in there and then have you know like five to ten options available to you at any time when you ever you know start crafting for some of those items and you can you know really like you know put exactly everything together so you can do like a, a bigger session and you know swap out like five different items at once if you have a bunch of these things saved up so make use of that stash uh, throw in those items and you never know when you will need them that's basically the point i was trying to make here there's not really a reason to really like throw away the, uh, items that have any kind of potential there's no reason to sell them to the vendor because as i mentioned these items are not worth anything i get like 100 gold here as you see you know, you can run like one map, you can get like 10,000 gold or something. So you don't need to sell items or anything like that. Just dump them in there and see what you can need later. Now, of course, you don't want to like just fill up like 100 stash tabs of, you know, trash items. You do want to make sure that you don't waste your time actually, you know, sorting all these items and, you know, picking up too much loot that you then have to dump in a stash. So again, going back to the loot filters, 
here this would be like another case of okay you can make the filter more strict over time so for example with the with this filter i made earlier where i want to see you know one stat that is at least tier four maybe eventually you can also say something like okay we want them two stats that are at least tier four and suddenly you're gonna see a lot less items on the filter and this means you're also gonna pick up fewer items and you know you have less stuff to go through whenever you try to do like these kind of upgrade sessions or maybe as you progress you might want to like you know sort out an entire like old dump tab and you know, just empty it completely because you already know okay i have a bunch of really good items that's just so you don't get much distracted from the actual grind and then trying to find those better and better items as you go but using the stash tab to your advantage is extremely uh, important so make sure you use the stash and tip number 10 and the last one for this video is craft your items so i already talked about this a little bit with the forge so i'm not going to go into detail of how all the crafting works but crafting is a really integral part of last epoch and it's also super fun to be honest so you always have this forge at any time you can open it and you can start crafting on your items so i mentioned for example you want to get life and resistances maybe movement speed and these kind of things but in general crafting is something you want to do to make actual good items so you find an item on the ground and that is just your base this is how you get started and then you put it in there and you try to you know make something better out of it so you see here for example this is one of those exalted items that i found it has a really good base and it already has a tier 4 movement speed on it, which is like a really good start. And it has an exalted, really high cold rest roll. So in case I actually really want that cold rest, well, I could use this item and I can try my luck to try to improve it. So for example, here we can try to change this dodge rating to maybe another resistance or maybe life. And we can see what happens. And we got actually a poison rest on the first try upgrading this thing. And here's intelligence. That is not really useful for a rogue. So I can also try to roll this into something else. And we got a critical success we actually upgraded our movement speed here which is nice uh, so this allows you to get um, a free craft and it also upgrades a second random stat on top of this so we got very lucky but we didn't really get anything that i wanted and now we rolled into dexterity for example so this is turning out to be a really good item really fast <laughs> turns out and well we upgrade this here we finished this item now boom and you see we have um, tier 5, which is the maximum that you can craft on three of the stats. We have the tier 6 exalted stat. And, well, this is a very good item. And it still has forging potential left. So whenever there is forging potential, you see this here at the top. You want to try to make use of that and just try to make the item the best possible it can be. And, for example, there's like a last step here that we could do, which is uh, rolling the values of the stats. So this is um, the rule of refinement. So you see here, the poison resistance is only at 30 out of 45. Uh, however, the other stats are relatively high. So let's see what we get if we use this. And uh, well, poison resistance rolled a bit up, cold a bit down, movement speed is perfect. Well, this sounds like something that I might want to use. And suddenly we have a really good item here. So you see how much this item has improved compared to what it was before. By just doing a few different crafts and trying to get exactly the stats that I want. Some of it is RNG. Sometimes you don't get that lucky as I just got. And you just try again. This is also why, for example, in the previous tip I explained. Okay, you want to have a bunch of these bases available. This is why I have this tab here of crafting bases, for example. That, you know, maybe have like one or two good stats. But you never know when you run out of fortune potential. You might get unlucky. You might not roll into the right stats if you do like random outcomes. Or you might just get really unlucky with the forging potential draining really fast. So it's always good to have a bunch of these things available. Now, another tip also for crafting in particular is there are these shards that uh, you gather uh, from the ground. So um, you can find like these, you know, whatever stats you can craft here as a shard. It's like a physical item that you pick up and then you uh, transfer your crafting items into your uh, material tab basically. So it's like not taking any space but some of them are much more rare than others. So especially all of the class related stuff is usually relatively rare. And I'm gonna to try to find an example here. So we have this thing here, for example. So this has um, like a very class specific affix here, this physical pen with shadow daggers. That is like a rogue affix only compared to like, for example, life or resistances that you know are very, very common. And uh, even at uh, this high level of my character, I only have two shards. So you see always this number here. I have two shards of this particular stat. It's pretty rare to find this. 
And what you can do actually is you can try to specifically uh, hunt down those items and try to basically build a pool of these uh, shards available for you so that you can try to uh, use them later on. So in this case, um, we can try to use a rune of removal, which removes an affix on the item and then gives you shards depending on the tier. So this is a tier 4 physical pen with Shadow Dagger mod. And if I remove it, um, well, we got unlucky. We used up all the forging potential. But basically, if I had hit that, I would get four of these shards. And then whenever I try to craft on another item and, you know, I want to improve the stats or I want to reroll away from it with a Glyph of Chaos, then you would need those shards. And, uh, well, in this case, the last option we have is we can always shatter the item. Shatter also uh, gives you shards back, but not you know, as efficiently as Rune of Removal. So we can see what you got. And we actually got three of those shards here. So you can specifically look for those rare stats that uh, have these, uh, these rare shards. And even if you don't need them for your build, you may want them so that you can actually craft on items and, you know, change the stat into something else. So another thing that I like to do is, for example, I like to make like, you know, some um, recolored, let's say, you know, this white item level. And then I go into a loot filter and I just show basically all of the class specific stats because they are basically all of these rare ones. And at least for a while early on, I try to just like gather some of these items. And uh, you can also say, okay, there should be, you know, at least, um, you know, tier three or so that you actually have a good chance to get, um, you know, a bunch of shards, or you can actually like, remove, remove them to get at least three. And uh, like this, you're not going to waste your, um, you know, runes that much in order to stack up and basically build a good pool of these shards. So this is something that uh, will definitely hold you back a little bit from crafting if you don't start collecting these items and shattering them or removing them so that you build up a good pool of these affixes. Because if you look at this here, for example, you see that uh, here's the number of individual shards that I have for each of those individual stats. And well, some of them, I just don't really have all that many. I see here I have three of these and 250 of these. Uh, some of them are just simply way more rare here. Void pen, I have two, for example. Here is lightning pen, I have one. So depending on, you know, what exactly you're going for, if you want to craft some of these things, or if you're just like, you know, trying to, you know, forge a really good chess piece and chess pieces, for example, can roll a bunch of these class specific stats. Um, well, you may want to try to stack up a little bit of a pool of these things. And the good thing is that you can always check the vendors for this rune of shattering. Now, this is something that is a bit expensive very early in the campaign, but once you are in monoliths in the late game, this 2000 gold per rune of shattering is not a big deal at all. So every time I come out of an echo, I just check the vendor or like every few runs maybe, and I just buy a bunch of these shatter runes. And uh, well, it's a bit of a gold sink, but on the other hand, it allows me to like build up this pool of shards and have like more of these rare things available. And it can very well happen that you are, you know, working on an item and uh, you're just running out of a specific shard that, you know, you really want to actually finish the item in order to like, you know, roll out of a certain stat or upgrade the item or this, this stat that you want. So you can always put it back in a loop filter and then make like, you know, a certain rule for it to show exactly the thing that you need. So this wraps up this video here about my top 10 beginner tips. I try to give a lot of detail about each of them because, well, I think they are just not important. If you want to learn more about Last Epoch, I recommend you go check out some of my other videos. I go much more in depth about, you know, the crafting, the items, etc. Or you go check out our Maxwell page here. So we have an entire Maxwell Last Epoch branch. Our guys here have been hard at work at building uh, the entire branch with like new guides, updated builds, everything you can hope for. So we have these resource posts here. We have the monoliths explained, the tier lists, uh, the build guides. You can choose many different archetypes in this game. Uh, just check them out. There's a lot of really good stuff here. Uh, so this is done by our last Epoch team. These are these guys here. So also make sure you, um, you know, send them a follow, show them some love. They have been doing an amazing job here. I've um, you know, been, been hanging out with these guys, you know, getting tips as well for myself and so on. And they're really, really good at what they do. And last but not least, I also want to give a shout out to my sponsors, the Crimson Market. So you might know them from Diablo 4. I've been um, working with them for a few months now. They have built this uh, amazing uh, trading platform here and they have been sponsoring me for a few months. And they are slowly expanding into, you know, other genres as well. They have also racks here. Uh, one of the other guys they're sponsoring 
and they have this uh, loyalty club with a giveaway. So they give away a huge uh, Last Epoch themed uh, hologram PC. It's actually a pretty badass machine here, so you can see this here. Uh, it has like this Last Epoch logo in there as well. And uh, if you sign up for this uh, loyalty club, you can have a chance to win this PC. This is like an in incredible machine. Uh, I think the specifications might be down here in the in the link. But uh, well, if you follow this, uh, you can see the, the club here. So the way this works is that you sign up. And uh, I think right now they even have like a free sign up for the first tier. They have like three different tiers that you can uh, sign up for. You get more loyalty points uh, every month, depending on the tier. But you also have, you know, a few days left here to claim free auction it here. So this is the, the middle one here, actually. So you can sign up there and have a chance to win this prize. So go check it out. I have the link in the description as well. And uh, maybe you win that uh, last Epoch hologram PC. Good luck. That wraps up this video here. Hope you liked it. If you want to follow me for more last Epoch content, I'm going to be releasing a bunch more stuff. So stay tuned for that. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.